primary prevention of HPV. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Uh, 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 safety and efficacy of uh, primary prevention of HIV. I would like to say that this infection is a topical problem. Cervical cancer in 70 percent is caused by 16, 18 type of HPV virus and in 20. 18, a great number of uh, women died of cervical cancer in the world. 80% of them almost uh, lived in the developing countries. Um, uh, we could speak about uh, WHO and uh, methods of uh, uh, fighting HPV. If we consider the uh, primary prevention as vaccination, uh, for teenagers, for girls and boys, secondary one screening treatment and surgery. It's associated with palliative uh, uh, help uh, assistance, chemo, radiation. More than 100 countries introduce vaccination in uh, their national programs. 26 of them, uh, they uh, immunize boy. They called it neutral gender vaccination when girls are to be immunized as well. Uh, for whom it is necessary. So we consider immunization only of girls. Uh, for example, more than 80 percent of population, uh, immunized girls population, reduce uh, uh, the level of infection in boys. If it's uh, uh, less than 80 percent, uh, then neutral gender vaccination is necessary. There are three vaccines. Uh, uh, two, uh, four, and nine uh, valent. They are not alive. They do not have uh, alive components of HPV. It mixture of recombinant uh, particles. All three of them have 16th, 18th type. Um, again, the va vaccine is recombinant. It's not a life one. Um, uh, it is introduced into genome of non pathogenic uh, microorganism, a vector gene is introduced. As of today, in the Russian Federation, uh, we have four valent or quadrivalent, in other words, that uh, have uh, uh, types that are more typical of our country. We can use it for boys and girls. Young girls, women, it's in women, it's from 9 to 45 years. As we consider boys, we can immunize from 9 up to 26 uh, uh, schedule, immunization or schedule. According to the international standards, it could be done twice when it's 9, 14 years, but there is uh, there should be six months interval between the two uh, vaccines. Uh, if they are older than 16 or immune deficient, uh, HP, HIV, for example, then three, uh, three vaccines are to be given uh, efficacy of vaccination. Uh, we should consider several uh, uh, aspects, populational effect, reduction of incidence and immunogenicity of vaccine to which level uh, protective uh, antibodies could be produced and developed. Uh, uh, examples, Australia. They started in uh, 2007. Uh, first, they started immunizing boys. In 2003, uh, they started immunization of boys. Now they use non-valent or non-avalent. Uh, it's, um, uh, yeah, and they saw that reduction of ta shrinking of types of HPV that were not included in the vaccine started going down cross uh, immunization. Number of candelomas in women started going down, down. Number of candelomas in men as well. But 
uh, to reduction of uh, the incidence among, among men who did not get immunization reduced. So it's populational effect of immunization as a result uh, of the 10 years program uh, in uh, Australia uh, levels or incidence of cervical cancer reduced. Uh, it's, it, uh, and it was possible uh, because 70 percent of population got vaccination, got immunization. Uh, incidence reduced 75 uh, percent. Denmark, same effect. Uh, if uh, vaccination was introduced in 2009 and um, if we take uh, girls uh, who were born since 1989, uh, they were considered in the cohort. Uh, so they considered those who were immunized and compared with those who were not. They found out that uh, among girls who got immunization, the risk of developing of cancer cells reduced to consider considerably and uh, in, co in comparison with those who were not immunized, uh, United States, four well and quadrivalent vaccine number of uh, pre-cancer lesions of the cervix reduced, cohort study, United States, uh, you can see that more than uh, 100,000 women participated. They saw how number of doses affected clinical results. Even one dose uh, resulted in a lower uh, incidence or uh, uh, development of pre-cancer uh, cervical diseases. When they estimated two a valent vaccine. They saw that 90 percent of immunized with this vaccine uh, demonstrated 90 percent of efficacy. It was connected with a, a strain 16 and 18, and in uh, 60 percent seen to uh, associated with oncogenic HPV. So it's cross cross immunity development. In uh, the immunized, another study uh, that was carried out for four years, more than 18,000 patients were included. There was a control and comparison groups, and uh, uh, despite of the initial status, uh, uh, what they wanted to, to see, to find out. It's, uh, regardless of the initial status, uh, the result associated with HPV was considered. Uh, positive test did not affect post-immunized effect of two-valent vaccine. If we estimate uh, the efficacy of vaccinations effect, uh, the compared uh, situations associated with cervical cancer in immunized and not, and, and statistically important lower figures were typical of immunized women. I would like to emphasize that vaccination of women who uh, uh, had have HPV and got surgery, uh, they develop, developed HPV uh, second time in very rare questions. So there is immune response after immunization. Uh, seroconversion is typical of 70-80% of women in men uh, give even low immune response uh, seroconversion. So it's about uh, titus of antibodies. It's long period is needed up to 18 months after 
of the necessary infection. Uh, the organ is not able to develop effective immune response. It's could increase uh, possibility for recurrency when it's a uh, natural infection of HPV secondary uh, chance of secondary uh, infection uh, is uh, reducing but after immunization serological response is stronger uh, neutralizing antibodies, polyclonal one, are developing four weeks after the third dose are necessary, after six months after first immunization. It's in seven months after first vaccination. Uh, B cells of memory are activated. For them to uh, differentiate, the interval of time should be four, six months uh, if uh, the interval between the first and second dose is shorter, it re uh, results in a shorter period of protection. The schedule should include four months of interruption of a break in between. Types of antibodies, titers, uh, uh, they are present for ten, uh, 10 years. Actually, officially, we speak about five years, but the vac vaccine is a young one and we are lacking clinical experience and post-clinical studies are being continued. I would like to stress uh, some things associated with safe and uh, rectogenicity. Uh, so we think about adverse and serious adverse effects. Uh, on the other ha hand, there are normal uh, reactions to immunizations. The vaccine goes through a number of stages of clinical studies. We have data here how many men and women were included in the clinical trials uh, of different vaccines. Thousands of uh, patients participated. As of today, there is a global committee on the WHO JCVS. They are dealing with data of safety in post-licensing period. Uh, it's in the last meeting of the committee it was shown that uh, mortality in Europe of cervical cancer is high. Vaccines were introduced, uh, were included in the schedule in 38 or 53 European countries. Coverage of young girls is uh, 60 to 95 percent in different uh, different countries. Why in some countries it's very coverage is low? First of all. Uh, we are lacking a reliable, good quality scientific information. Many parents, even medical people, they are afraid. Uh, of vaccinations because they think about uh, safety and what are the arguments among uh, parents and medical people that it could negatively affect reproductive function, uh, that it could cause development of cancer, uh, that uh, it's possible to get HPV after uh, HPV, it's a recombinant one. It does not contain live virus, so it's not possible to contract this virus after immunization. There are other aspects. According to WHO classification, any unfavorable event that happened after vaccination um, is called side effect of immunization or vaccination, they can be classified as serious and non-serious and related and non-related to the vaccine. So normal uh, reactions are non-serious and can be local and, uh, uh, and systemic. As the HPV vaccine are not live, then these side effects can occur within two days post-vaccination. So, that, I mean, normal, um, local side effects 
not complications. So these are general dizziness, uh, dizziness and uh, headaches and uh, vomiting and nausea. Very frequently, uh, it happens even during vaccination, not after. Syncopes uh, or just uh, well, these things uh, do happen, and they are reported in the United States starting from 2004, which are mainly related to the stress of getting a vaccine, not to the uh, vaccine itself. When it comes to safety update of HIV, HIV vaccines, they this is something that is done uh, on constant basis, uh, starting from the approval. There have been over. 200 million doses of this vaccine and uh, anaphylactic um, shock uh, risk is uh, 1.7 per 100,000. And uh, mainly it's a reaction to the stress of getting a vaccine. When it comes to fertility and HPV vaccine, this is exactly what the uh, parents and even health providers are against vaccination because of that. There are several uh, reviews all over the country uh, that have been reported, actually, and there is no link between uh, infertility and uh, um, or fertility as a function and uh, HPV vaccination. This, these are multiple cohort studies which show us that there is no link between fertility and uh, vaccination. And uh, this slide also proves it. When it comes to autoimmune disorders, uh, for example, um, Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome, uh, and uh, this is the study that was done in the United States, and uh, they uh, compared the background pathology in the general population and the ones who were vaccinated. One Guillain-Barre uh, syndrome or one case for the whole uh, number of these doses and the uh, level of uh, risk um, tells us that there is no elevated risk of autoimmune diseases after HPV vaccine. There, are mul there were multi-million doses that were intro uh, introduced and great deal of uh, studies were conducted, uh, and they all verified that there is no risk of autoimmune disorders after HPV vaccination. So also they analyzed the uh, complex uh, of um, regional, I mean, pain uh, syndrome uh, or CRPS, uh, POTS and thromboembolism. There was no uh, link to the vaccination. Safety profile of the vaccine is usually uh, assessed by the number of doses and number of uh, side effects. And you can see that it's a very, very low uh, prevalence. Thus, the clinical trials did not register any new serious adverse events. And the vaccine doesn't increase the Guillain-Barre syndrome. And uh, also, there is no link between autoimmune disorders and vaccination. There is no link between the uh, C, uh, CRBC, uh, BS, and also the postural tachycardia. When it comes to pregnancy, it's very frequently uh, when the vaccination is um, uh, just uh, advised during uh, pregnancy and post-delivery. Uh, Again, there is a study that shows that there is no abnormal um, fetal development um, or uh, development of pregnancy after HPV, so it is not associated with the risk of pregnancy uh, pathology or fetal pathology. At the moment, the priority of the study is assessment of immunogenicity uh, in children below the age of nine. And also, we continue the clinical uh, assessment of the clinical efficacy of all groups of population. We need to find additional uh, proof of this. When it comes, comes to the uh, special groups of vaccination, we can uh, provide this vaccine to the HIV uh, positives, to lactating women, or for the uh, health providers. Again, we don't have any special uh, sort of recommendations. Uh, the uh, WHO position is that it should be included into the national immunization uh, calendar or schedule uh, the, the, as highly effective, and the main target group are teenagers.